Alrighty. Hello, my name is Laura Jarvis and we are at Rainbow Gardens Nursery and today we are going to talk about shade plants. A lot, a lot, a lot of people come in and they ask, what can I grow in the shade? It's always difficult. Um, sometimes we can't find enough color and uh, sometimes we just want to give up because we've got these shade areas and we want them to be beautiful, but they just, you know, they just don't look the way we want them to look. So hopefully today we can give you some really great ideas for plants that are gonna go in shade. Now, what do I mean by shade? Um, let's talk about an area that literally does not get sun. Um, we can take that into a little bit more light, which would be filtered underneath maybe some of our big oak trees. Um, so shade all the way to filtered, but I'm not going to include morning sun or part sun, sometimes we call it. Uh, that opens up a whole lot of other plants. Uh, today we're going to just stick to shade and uh, filtered underneath the trees. So that means none of these plants are uh, going to get sunburned at all. The, these have big beautiful leaves and um, they would be prone to getting a sunburn if they were in too much even morning sun. So. Let's talk about these in categories. I kind of like to, to, to put things in, in a little bit separate type of uh, categories for you all. It might help you think of sizes and shapes that way as well. So if we're talking about maybe some, some shrubs or some plants that get just a little bit larger, um, we've got a beautiful gold dust akuba here and they can be in the background. They, they, I've seen them up as, as large as six or seven feet and, and wide um, by maybe four or five feet wide. So they can get, get fairly large. Um, the, the gold, uh, what we call gold dust on them or gold splotches on here are very, very attractive, especially when you're pairing with some of the other colors like maybe something that has some reddish tones to it. So this right here is a variegated hydrangea. Hydrangeas are great uh, in shade, total shade, uh, filtered, um, and they have absolutely beautiful blooms. You, you all have to see this plant midsummer when it's a blooming. Um, another plant that blooms, like the hydrangea does, um, is a camellia. They have beautiful, glossy, dark leaves, and they can get a little bit of height to them. Uh, generally, we see them about in the four foot range um, and kind of a very nice, rounded, uh, very compact uh, type of look to it with very dark green, glossy leaves, but absolutely stunning blooms in the off season. You're talking about blooms being uh, uh, through the winter months, December and January, which is wonderful to have some color out there in the garden when a lot of things aren't that pretty. Um, let's see, what else do we have that's a shrubby look to it? Um, we, have, uh, we have a plumbago here. Plumbagos are interesting. They can go deeper shade. They are not gonna give you near as much bloom if you've got those in a deeper shade but it is something that will grow and um, it will do decent. Uh, Turk's cap is another uh, shade shrub that we don't have. Uh, we're gonna show you a picture of that, um, but it is a native plant. Beautiful, beautiful little red blooms on it all summer long. And some of our native pollinators like our hummingbirds love that. So that's a, a really good one to have. Um, and then let's talk about our regular perennials, um, which would vary all the way 
<clears throat> I want to say from things like our hostas, the leopard plant, which I don't have right here, the hookahs, which are these. Um, these also are called coral bells, and they get this very tall bloom with coral uh, or pale pink uh, going all the way to almost maybe a yellow on some of them. Bloom stock on them, very pretty, very dainty looking. Um, most of the times we grow this for the beautiful red colored leaves. And look how that goes with that gold dust. Isn't that pretty? I just like that, those two colors together. And the hostas, a very, very uh, uh, broad, wide uh, a variety of different leaf types, all the way from the, the giant leafed ones um, to uh, lime colored leaves with variegation on them. Um, we've got the yellow variegated leaves. There's a lot of different varieties now. Some of these, like the hydrangeas and the hookahs and the hostas, um, and probably the ferns, are going to like a little bit richer soil. So I'm going to add some peat moss into my soil when I'm getting ready to plant those. Um, that's going to enrich that soil, help it hold the moisture, give it a little bit more acid um, to our high alkaline soil. Um, so that's going to help. Another really unique plant, um, Joelle, I'm going to have you get a close-up of this beautiful acanthus, and you're going to show us what the bloom on that looks like as well. That is a gorgeous plant. Uh, sometimes they call it bear's breeches. It is acanthus, and it is absolutely stunning. Those of you who want that tropical feel with the large leaves, you can go with something like that acanthus and these beautiful hostas and elephant ears and maybe a kuba in the background. That's going to give you a real tropical feel, um, but also in your shade. We also have some interesting native type of things for those of you who are trying to go all native and you have some deep shade we have a sea oats here and they do get oats up on the top and they kind of quiver with the wind so it has a lot of beautiful movement to it um, in your garden um, the wildlife like it a lot of our our birds and so forth, uh, especially native quail and turkeys and things like that, will love to get in there and get those seeds off of there. We have some native columbines, which are also going to give you flowers in the shade. Um, the one that probably is talked about the most is the Texas yellow or Texas gold columbine and um, it will do well. And then this one is a really interesting one. This is called a wild red columbine. And she's just has really pretty little, looks like little upside down umbrellas or little droplets. It's just a very, very pretty, interesting bloom. Something that may add interest, but it, it does play peekaboo with you, and that is the oxalis. Um, they can come up and be absolutely beautiful when they're blooming, um, and then it decides it's done or it's too hot outside, and it will totally disappear to back down to the bulb, and it will be <clears throat> underground, and you will never even see it. You forget it's there. So it, it's, it plays peekaboo with you. How about ferns? You guys want to do a real lush, ferny looking type of area. Uh, maybe put a fountain in your deep shade, a couple of nice chairs. Um, we have a lot of different ferns. Um, this one is a holly fern. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful glossy leaves. I love this plant. On winters that are not too cold, it will stay green all winter long. We've got river ferns and autumn ferns. The autumn fern is what we have right here and it will get um, some interesting color tones to it. You'll get a little bit of golds and a little bit of reddish tones to the leaves. Um, really, really pretty. 
And one of Joelle's favorite we've got right here. Actually, I love to use these in our hanging baskets in the shade. Um, they will get real fluffy. I call them air ferns. That's what we called them 30, 40 years ago. It's actually a plumosa fern and it is a cousin to the asparagus fern. Um, very hardy. I have seen these on trellises. I've seen them used in hanging baskets on porches where people get no sun at all and um, they will twine around the chains and go up uh, across the top of the porch and stuff. They're very, very pretty, very attractive. Okay, now some of our standbys that I haven't talked about yet um, kind of go into a little bit of ground cover and that would be um, a lot, a lot, a lot of people will use the liriope. Um, we have different shades of liriope. This is a golden one, has beautiful golden stripes. There's the Aztec grass that has the, the white striping on it. And then there's several different types of green liriope, um, all the way from kind of smallish ones all the way to the big giant blue ones um, where they will get, oh, I wanna say probably between two and three feet tall. They can get quite large. Um, and of course they will bloom in the fall, get a little spike with little purple flowers on them in the fall. So they have a lot of interest. If you have large um, pots or large planters that you're wanting something in the center that has that uh, fountain type of feel to it, the liriope is a great choice. They do spread from the roots, so they're going to get a little bit bigger too. Um, so then we go into ground covers, so the, a little cousin, almost a little baby dwarf kind of um, <laughs> liriope look is monkey grass. A lot of um, people will use this for a little ground cover um, and it can be walked on. I've seen the, the little mondo grass, the short one, um, in between flagstones and things like that where it will actually spread and look like a little grass in an area. So you can use these mass planted and get a really, really nice effect. Um, the liriope can do that with as well. So there's other things like English ivies. You can see in the backdrop back here, we've got a beautiful English ivy that's probably older than I am. That's saying a lot. Um, and that uh, English ivy will cover great ground cover, great backdrop, um, you know, against a wall or a trellis, a fence. Um, you can use that in a lot of different ways. You can use it in hanging baskets and have it hang down. So a juga um, will spread. It has these cute little underground runners that will spread and it'll come up and um, just kind of fill out a little area. Um, a juga will bloom in the springtime with cute little, uh, little upright bracts of bluish or purplish blooms to it. This is a chocolate chip, which is a really cute little miniature ajuga, and I use this a lot with the little miniature gardening. Um, you know, if people are doing big uh, fairy garden areas, but they want something in a, a miniaturized look, I will use this uh, little chocolate chip ajuga. It's really cute. The tricolor ajuga gets a lot of pretty rosy pinks and whites and creams in it. Beautiful color tones on these. And then something that is used a whole lot, um, I've seen it come back in winters where it is not uh, real, real cold. And this is Creeping Jenny. And it has a pretty yellowy chartreuse kind of color. So when you're mixing other colors, they, they really play off of each other extremely well. You can get some really super nice combinations. Um, so this is, is beautiful with, with blue. Um, it's beautiful with the, the burgundy tones. It's even pretty with the gold. Um, so this is a, a really neat under uh, ground cover type of thing or in a pot. If you're putting a pot together, it will cascade down the side and give you some really nice uh, color contrasts. 
And then I have another one that I really like, and most of the time we do see it in the sun, but it will grow in the shade. If you have a hillside or an area that tends to erode, this is a native plant and it's called frog fruit. It may not bloom as much in the shade and it also tends to get tall instead of laying flat. So you're probably looking at maybe 10 inches, maybe even 12 inches tall instead of laying very flat to the ground. But it's going to root and creep and spread. So if you have an area that tends to erode, this might be something you want to look at. It's a lot more hardy, uh, drought tolerant and strong than all of these other things that we have talked about. So I thought I would just include it just because of that. Thank you all out there very, very much. We love you at Rainbow Gardens. Come see us. Share this with your friends that have shade areas they need to plant and uh, we'll see you soon.